Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from theblackbusinessschool.com. Now, I was, I was talking to my daughters the other day, um, and we were we happened to be talking about men, we were talking about dating and all that stuff. And uh, we talk a lot. We talk about pretty much everything that they bring up. I'm willing to talk about anything with my kids. And one of the things that we uh, hit on, we've hit on this before, is uh, you know how to kind of know uh, somebody's earning potential, how to deal with somebody. Um, you know, and to know that whether they are, you're dealing with somebody who is doing well, who's doing okay, who's really struggling, who's pretending, stuff like that. And so the thing about it is, the hard part is that uh, people lie. People lie all the time, right? So uh, it is, this is especially true when you talk about men, you know, trying to impress girls or whatever. They'll sort of, you know, throw money around and act like they, you know, money's not a thing or wear flashy clothes, have a fancy car, live in a nice house, whatever. Have all the little symbols and tra trappings that show you that they're doing well, right? Um, but what's unfortunate is that most of the people who pretend to be doing well really aren't doing that well. Um, and also... What many of us don't understand is that um, where a person is is not always import as important as where they're gonna be, right? So even if I am doing well, <clears throat> well, let's say I'm making you know six, seven figures, and and I'm showing you all kinds of flashy stuff. Well, I may be doing well now, uh, but if I'm spending my money on flashy stuff all the time, <clears throat> I may not be doing so well in the future. So um, here here are a couple of measuring sticks to kind of help you sort of see it in a, in a broader context. Um, I was a finance professor um, at a lot of different universities. I've taught at about five different universities since I was 22 years old. So what happens when you do that is you see wealth and money and finance and all that from a lot of different dimensions and angles that a lot of people don't see. And so uh, one simplified way I can break this down to you to help you understand if you're dealing with a broke ass dude or a dude who's got earning potential or a dude who's maybe broke temporarily versus a dude who's broke permanently versus or a dude who's got money now who's going to be broke in the future or whatever. Um, uh, I'll break down this framework for you. Now, now I want to make sure this is clear, though. This is not just a gender thing. If you're a guy and you're evaluating, you know, whoever you're dating. Same thing applies here too, right? Because uh, in fact, I truly believe that if you want to progress in life, you want partners in life that are going to help you elevate your situation. You don't want people that are going to pull you down or make it heavier for you to lift, right? Um, so ultimately, uh, this advice probably applies well to both men and women. Now, here's the thing about wealth and resources. Uh, you can kind of break it down into three different ways, almost like value in a company. You can sort of look at what wealth has been accumulated from the past, you know, based on what they, you know, have gotten over the years that they've added up, that they're, they're sitting on now, uh, the income that they have now, like how are they doing right this second, and then the future. What are the future earnings, earnings prospects? What's going to happen in the future? And the reason that's important is because it can be very deceptive. Sometimes somebody may look like they're not doing very well right now, but they've got things going on that tell you that they're going to be doing well uh, in the future, that their lives, that their life's going to get better, um, that things are going to um, uh, evolve in a way where you're going to look back and say, wow, I wish I had bet on that horse from the beginning. I wish I had actually uh, picked that person instead of that person. Um, and so uh, in terms of, you know, wealth from the past, uh, where I would start is, you know, you want to get a sense of whether or not the person has been saving, whether or not they've been making investments in their life. And I'm not just talking about financial investments. I'm talking about investments in education, um, investments in just smart financial decision making, uh, investments in terms of positioning their life in the right way so their expenses are not so high that they're barely getting by. Um, it's all about choices. So a person who's made bad life choices up until this point, there's a good chance that they may continue to make uh, bad choices in the future. And so you got to look at where a person is as an indicator of where uh, where they've been and and the choices they made to get to where they are. Most of your life is kind of just a, a compilation of the decisions you've made, good and bad, good and bad, right? And uh, and what I also observe is that when people look at what somebody has right now, how they're doing right now, we tend to be fixated on the future, or excuse me, on the present. Uh, we don't think so much about the future and we act like the past doesn't matter, which I don't agree with that at all. But when you talk about the way people get fixated on the future, what I'll see is that people will look at how much money somebody's making right now. Um, how much money they're spending on me right now, what they're wearing on their body right now, what they're driving right now. And so you'll line up with somebody right now because of what they got going on right now. 
And 10 years down the line, you're looking back and saying, wow, I should never have linked up with this person because I, I got onto a sinking ship. Um, I saw that a lot in um, college. I went to the University, the University of Kentucky and the basketball players, that those were the men that all the girls wanted. So a girl could you know, marry a basketball player when she's 23 years old. But if he's not making good decisions, good investments in his life. Then by the time she's 33, she's looking for a divorce. She's regretting the fact that she ever won the prize. That's what in economics they call that the winner's curse, where you win what you what you fought for, but you find out later on that you really wish you had lost, right? Uh, or same thing with like a Barack Obama. You know, a lot of people want to bet on Barack Obama after he became president, but a lot of people wouldn't have bet on him back when he didn't have enough money to get a rental car. Um, and so, you know, what I tell my girls is basically. Don't fixate on one particular thing. Don't just fixate on what he's got going on right now. Look at what he's got going on in the future. The, uh, one of the big big factors is communication. Talk to him about it. Talk to him about money and talk to him about life and talk to him about the future. If you ask somebody, so so what are your plans for the future? What are you hoping to do with your, with your life? And they don't have an answer for you. That's a very bad indicator. That kind of tells you that um, they're living their life by accident. They're just kind of stumbling through life and hoping they land in a good situation. One thing I have found almost indisputably to be indisputably true in most cases is that success does not happen by accident. You, if you just sort of randomly walk around and randomly hope that good things happen to you, you're usually not going to end up where you want to be because you didn't even know where you wanted to be in the first place. Right now, it doesn't mean everybody has to have a precise life plan on everything they want to do, but you should probably have some idea. Most really successful people had an idea like Wendy Williams, for example, this is one person that comes off the top of my head. Um, you know, crazy lady out of her mind, but one of the greatest, most successful, most professional talk show hosts I've ever dealt with. I, be, I was on her show six times and every time it was the best interview I'd ever done. She's a better interviewer than any person who's ever interviewed me in my life. And she's successful. Why? Well, because Wendy always had a plan. Wendy always knew what she was going to do. If you can go back 25 years, Wendy was doing exactly then what she's doing right now. She just has gotten better at it over time. <clears throat> Same thing with her co-host, Charlamagne the God, who's now at the top of radio. Now, I'm using these two people as examples, but um, I've watched their careers over at least the last decade. And I researched their careers before the last decade. And one thing I've observed is a type of consistency where if you had asked them back in 2003 what they were trying to do, they could have told you what they were planning to be doing. Doing in 2016. So, um, you know, I tell my girls, look for that. Look for a plan. A man with a plan is, is usually going to be a winner if he's executing the plan. That's when the present comes in. You know, a lot of people have a plan, but they don't have no way to get there. It's like, well, what are you going to do? I'm going to drive across the country. Well, how are you going to get there? I don't know. I don't got a car. I, I, I'm just going to sit here and hope somebody gives me a car. I'm going to hope somebody buys me a plane ticket. That ain't going to work either. I need to be able to tell you, oh, I got a car. I put gas in it. I'm getting in it right now. I'm going to drive 50 miles an hour. I'm going to go up high, uh, Highway 71, and I'm going to go across the country. That's a clearer plan. So I tell my girls, look for a man with a plan. Uh, also, um, you know, that last part, when you talk about money, when you talk about money, I tell them, be careful about dudes that get flashy with money. It's, it's natural for men to show off a little bit. You know, we want you to think we got swag and that we got something going on or whatever. Right. OK, cool. But I tell them, like, if a man's throwing money around to impress you, just be careful because he might be uh, throwing he might be impressing himself into bankruptcy. He might be throwing around money, number one, money that ain't his. Um, you know, there's a difference between what somebody's got and what somebody owns. You know, if you got a whole bunch of stuff, I got a car, I got clothes, I got a house. That don't mean I own all of that. Don't, that don't mean I really building wealth. I'm just getting those things to impress you. A lot of Americans are deep in debt. And then I also tell them that when you talk to that man about money, how does he talk about it? Does he talk about it as if he's got a plan for that money and he's going to invest it and build? Or is he talking about it like, girl, I got bands. I, I, I just throw it up at the club. I just do it. Stay away from that. Stay away from that because what you're seeing is a person that basically isn't making good long-term financial decisions. So remember that when you evaluate whether or not a person is doing well financially or not, you look at three things. You look at the past, you look at the present, and you look at the future. All those things are relevant. Don't get fixated too much on one thing. Like if you get too fixated on the past, you don't accept the idea that people evolve, people grow, people change. But you have to see evidence of that change. See, a lot of people will be like, oh, well, the past is the past and he made some mistakes and it's no big deal. Yeah, but how much how many of those mistakes are actually indicative of the person that he still is? Right. A lot of times, for example, um, what was it? Somebody was saying to me the, uh, the other day that this is true in a lot of cases, not for everybody. But he said, I know people that go bankrupt and they're making 50,000 a year. And he said, I tell him that you, if you get if you was making 150,000 a year, you probably still would have went bankrupt because your spending uh, 
um, has a certain pattern to it. You have a certain way of dealing with money, a certain set of choices you consistently make that put you in that same situation. So you can win the lottery. There's a reason why most lottery winners end up going broke. Because they, because the mindset of somebody that leads to people buying lots of lottery tickets is a mindset of a broke person. People like that throwing, they throwing it out, they throwing it up. Excessive consumers are throwing it out and throwing it up. They end up broke, right? So at the end of the day, building money and building wealth is really a mentality. So you don't, you want to see if somebody has a mentality toward wealth building. If somebody has the right mentality toward wealth building, I don't care how broke they are, I don't care how much they struggling or whatever. If somebody has a, the right mentality. I'm going to bet on that horse every time. So bet on the right horses and, and you'll be all right. That, that's, help you, that's how you form what I would call healthy, happy, productive partnerships. All right, everybody, I'm about to get out of here. I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins. And by the way, I do have an online forum where you can ask me questions, uh, financial questions all day, or even social commentary. Some people ask me questions about that. And it's an awesome forum that you, uh, I think you're going to love. It's called AskDrBoyce.com. You can go to AskDrBoyce.com and you can ask any question you want. And I will get on video and I will answer your question along with any other questions that come in. And you can learn from my answers to your questions as well as answers to other people's questions. It's awesome. It's rich. It's full. It's, it's amazing. I think you're going to love it. I'm about to get out of here, guys. So take care. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.